Hey, yo, Dre. What's going on? It's your boy, Uncle Dewey. Just want to let you know that uh, I really appreciate the love you showed me with your voicemail. And to also let you know that you've inspired me to uh, start this podcast thing. I'm really in, enjoying it so far. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's keep it up. Let's do it. All right. Enjoy. And I'll see you on the airwaves or Facebook or Instagram or either way, I'll see you. You know what I'm saying? All right. Bye. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Dre. Welcome back to another episode of Dre's State of Mind. Now, you know, it's the day after the Super Bowl. I was waiting all football season for this, and we finally going to get into it. Um, Amongst the other myriad of topics. But uh, yeah, let's get into it right now. So, Super Bowl 55. Let's talk about it. Now, was it a thoroughly entertaining game that everybody thought it was going to be? No. <laughs> it was a uh, pretty much a dominant performance by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on both ends of the uh, of the field. Um defense was thoroughly thoroughly dominating. Um I've never really seen a defense that held Patrick Mahomes in the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, offense in check like that. Todd Bowles, uh, I'm assuming after week 12, um, because after Kansas City beat Tampa Bay in Tampa Bay week 12, I remember that game because I was in the hospital room uh, (laughs) getting tested, um, you know, uh, figuring out like, well, coming to the conclusion that I had uh, coronavirus, but that's beside the point. I was in the hospital bed um, watching the game on the monitor uh, while on the TV in the hospital room. And, you know, first half, uh, whatchamacallit, Tyreek Hill, he ran wild on on Kansas City, I mean, on Tampa Bay secondary. Um, You know, so pretty much uh, one of the touchdowns that he scored, because I think he scored like three touchdowns that game. Um, One of the touchdowns he scored, like he, he just beat, Antoine Whitfield Jr., uh, Winfield Jr., like he just dusted him, ran right past him on his way to the house. And on his way, he looked back at him, he threw up the deuces, like he threw up the peace sign to him. So when people were like, yo, why did Winfield Jr., you know, why did he taunt, um, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill on that one pass defense that he broke up, you know, um, when Mahomes threw up like a a desperation pass towards the end zone in the fourth quarter. That's why. <laughs> That's why it was a callback to week twelve. He didn't forget about that. But yeah, um, you know, you look at Patrick Mahomes' final his final stats for the game: twenty six forty nine, two hundred seventy yards. You know, his his average pass attempt was five and a half yards, <laughs> and that's telling. That's telling because usually he's closer to 10 yards per pass or whatever. Two interceptions, three sacks. Now, the glaring, glaring thing is the QBR rating was 49.9. Anybody knows that that is really horrible for a quarterback. And his QB rating was 52.3, which is another telling stat that was horrible. They harassed Mahomes all game, all game. Actually, like Mahomes kind of looked like Tom Brady back in like the 07 season. Uh, that was like Super Bowl, what was it, like 45 or something like that? Uh, when the Giants played the Patriots in the first, uh, the first time that they met them in the Super Bowl. Um, when they were smacking Tom Brady around, and he wasn't used to it. This time, uh, Mahomes was the one getting smacked around. Um, you know, they were down two of their starting tackles. Eric Fisher, he tore his ACL, um, I believe, against the Browns in the AFC Championship game. And uh, the other tackle they lost, I want to say like earlier in the season, 
but you know it's supposed to be next man up so you're actually technically you're starting right tackle they moved him to guard and then i think they're starting guard they moved him to tackle or something like that but it just did not work out um because tampa bay's defense like their defense from line it started with the d-line their d-line thoroughly whooped kansas city's offensive line like shaq barrett he lived like shaq barrett and dominican sue um who else was there uh jpp uh you know jason pierre paul they all lived in the backfield vita vea was uh, you know he was out there stuffing the run because that's what he's known for uh defensive tackle he was out there stuffing the run and dominican sue is more of like a i guess he's a hybrid tackle like you know he can stop the run but he's more known for their for uh rushing the passer so you know they set the tone they whooped the. Uh, you know, Kansas City's offensive line off the ball of scrimmage every single play. They whooped them. Um, Clyde, Ed- Clyde Edwards Hilaire, you know, the, the the talked about rookie running back for Kansas City. He only had nine carries, mainly due to them, you know, being down big. So, you know, why run the ball? Uh, he was held 64 yards. Mahomes had five scrambles for 33 yards. Um, and <clears throat> that was pretty much their rushing game. Like, I mean, you could look at the final stats for Travis Kelsey, 10, 10 receptions, 133 yards, you know, 15 on, on 15 targets. That's cool and everything, but like they were really able to keep him in check until like maybe like the third or fourth quarter when he started to get open over the middle. Um, that's mainly because like they were doubling and tripling Tyreek Hill who he had like seven scattered catches for 73 yards. So, I mean, week 12, Tyreek Hill had 13 receptions, 269 yards, three touchdowns. And in the Super Bowl last night, they held him to seven seven receptions, 73 yards, and no touchdowns. That that was the key. Like, they shut both of them out. Like, nobody on the offense, you know, scored a touchdown. Um... They, they were pretty much like, all right, so in the first two quarters, we're going to take uh, Kelsey away. We're going to take Hill away. We're going to dare one of the other wide receivers to beat us. Sammy Watkins didn't show up. Demarcus Robinson didn't show up. McCall Hardman didn't show up. <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 was, it, was a, it was a thoroughly dominating performance. Todd Bowles studied that game film that you know his his defense was uh they were still gelling they were still secondary still kind of young you know they got torched they, i mean there was nothing as you can say they got torched in week 12 but they came back and they redeemed themselves last night and um pretty much like you know on the offensive side for tampa bay tom brady you know if you look at this the stats or whatever mahomes he had more more yards than them more pass attempts but Brady really didn't need it. <laughs> he didn't need it because the defense put him in in great position to like just go out there, go get points. And I mean, you can have all the yards that you want, but the thing that you play for is points. So Brady was 21 for 29, 200, uh, 201 yards, you know, three touchdowns, only took it, uh, one sack. QBR was 81.8 and his QB rating was 125.8. Uh, Leonard Fournette, you know, he had 16 carries, 89 yards, one touchdown. Ronald Jones had 12 carries, 61 yards. So, you know, uh, with the two running backs combined, they ran for over 100 yards, uh, which Kansas City's rush defense was actually 27th against the run um, this season. The, they, they've never really been that good in the past couple of years against the rush. I don't understand why people those just don't. I mean, uh, usually Kansas City jumps on their team, like they jump on their opponents. So I can see why people don't rush the ball more against them. But if you can actually start off running the ball and you know keeping um, Mahomes and in, in the offense on the sideline, then you actually have a really really good shot at beating them. Uh, the only other team that really beat them in a shootout this year was uh the las vegas raiders um and that was a thoroughly entertaining game but 
pretty much like, you know, Gronk had a revival. <laughs> Six catches, 67 yards, two touchdowns. And um, his one touchdown, like his first touchdown came off of a, a nice like play action uh, tight end screen. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, and then uh, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown had five catches for 22 yards, but he had one touchdown. And, um, hey, what can I say about that, man? <laughs> uh, this past, like, what, year, year or so, um, a man had a very, 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 very rough year. <laughs> All his antics and everything like that. But um, he managed to, I guess, like, turn it around. Signed back with uh, well, signed with Tampa Bay after uh, he he signed with New England. Then he got cut after one game because uh, you know his his antics off the field. Um, I guess Tom Brady never he never stopped believing in him. So when he got a chance, he came down to Tampa Bay. You know he was he was recruiting to get uh, Antonio Brown on the on the team. They actually had an opening. You know. Um, they took a chance on him and he paid off, you know. So, yeah. So pretty much, it was it was a thoroughly, thoroughly dominating performance by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was shocking for most, um, but not me because I was like, yo, they they really have a chance. Like to look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, excuse me, their playoff run this season. They won all their games on the road, um, well except for the the Super Bowl because, you know, technically the Super Bowl, it was going to be in Tampa Bay regardless. Um, so they just happened to be the first team to ever um, host the Super Bowl. Um, so, I mean, they made history with that. Made history with, you know, Tom Brady winning his seventh uh, championship ring, his seventh Super Bowl ring. Um, he, had, he officially has more rings than every franchise in the NFL, which is wild. <laughs> The funny thing about it is, like, you know, I've been following Tom Brady since uh, his days at Michigan, since I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Michigan Wolverine fan. And, like, you can see, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was really good then, uh, even though uh, Lloyd Carr, um, for whatever reason, like, he felt obligated to, I guess, go back and forth with uh, Brady and Drew Henson at the time, because Drew Henson, I guess, was, like, the bigger recruit um when he came in even though like Tom Brady was there I think like one or two years uh prior so they would play like quarterback musical chairs but every time he was in there you would see that he was you know he was talented but you know never in my wildest dreams probably in his wildest dreams that he ever think that his career would unfold like that like 10 10 trips to the Super Bowl he's won seven times five uh super bowl mvps like his <laughs> shit is just it's ridiculous like you know and i don't care what anybody says like my man is he's the goat <laughs> greatest quarterback i've ever seen he's one of the greatest winners in football that i've ever seen like he, he's just he eats sleeps and you know dreams football like <laughs> and he he's done it with uh this is probably like the first year where he's actually had, you know, prolific receivers. And what's ironic is in the Super Bowl, like his prolific receivers only had like one and two catches, uh, respectively, per like per themselves. Like, you know, um, Mike Evans, I think, only had two. No, uh, I think Mike Evans had one reception. I think Mike Evans had one reception. And I believe Chris Godwin had two. Um, yeah, Mike. Mike Evans had one reception for 31 yards. And that was his only target of the game. <laughs> that was really his only target of the game. And Chris Godwin had uh, two receptions on four targets for nine yards. So, I mean, if you would have, if you're coming into the game and you told me that they were going to blow the Kansas City Chiefs out and Mike Evans only had one catch, Chris Godwin only had two catches, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. They, 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 they have no shot of winning. But, you know, they they found a way to win. They found a way to win. And Bruce Arians, uh, he finally got his first uh, Super Bowl victory as a head coach. 
he uh he went to the Super Bowl. Um no, you know what? They went he did when he was uh the offensive coordinator when they won the Super Bowl in 2008 uh when the Pittsburgh Steelers won the Super Bowl. Um yeah, so uh, I'm I'm just happy in Tampa Bay. Um they had pretty much like all their uh coordinators are all black. So that's another thing showing that you know black coaches black coaches can get it done in black history month <laughs> um and uh you know pretty much like um with kansas city's uh performance especially on offense i don't want to see or hear anybody say that this should affect you know eric b enemies you know ability to get a, a head coaching job because for the past couple years, like he's deserved the head coaching job, and I don't know why he keeps getting passed up for it. Um, but you know, uh, other unqualified coaches are getting head coaching jobs, like Joe Judge. He was like the special teams coach, or he was like a linebacker coach before he got a job at uh, with the with the New York Giants. Like you know what I'm saying, like examples like that. Or they uh, can't, uh, Carolina went out and they got uh, a coach from college didn't even prove that he could uh, he can coach in in the nfl um you know they they had a losing season um but i think eric Bieniemy like he did he deserves a head coaching job i wish they would have brought him to philly um i think he would have got our offense you know um he would have got our offense uh gave us a jump start that's what i'm looking for <laughs> that's the word i'm looking for but instead you know we we went with a, a fucking um, a clone of uh, damn, I, uh, his name is his name is escaping me, Frank Wright. We we went out and got a fucking Frank Wright cr- uh, clone to try to appease Carson Wentz and his bitch ass don't well, even want to be on the team. So I'm like, cool, like <laughs> get rid of him, get rid of him, get rid of Carson Wentz, because um. Nobody has time for your little diva attitude, my guy. Like, you play like shit the whole fucking year, and you got to get the fuck up out of here. Like, if you don't want to take responsibility for your play, I mean, I understand that you didn't have, like, the best weapons and everything, but if you don't want to take responsibility that you was playing like shit, like, because you were playing like ass, um, then get, get, get up out of the team, man. Like, and what I was hearing, like, you know, there's reports that half of the team don't even like him anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> he walks around like he's entitled and everything like that. Uh, Cause Jeffrey Lurie and uh, I guess like Harry Roseman, for whatever reason, they kiss Carson Wentz's ass. But yeah, so I'm not really too uh, excited about the football season when it comes to my Eagles, but I love football period. So <laughs> I'll definitely still be watching. I'll definitely still be watching. And um, we'll see if the Chiefs can get back to the Super Bowl. Um, the AFC is getting a lot harder. You know, Buffalo made strides. Um, my, the Miami Dolphins, is, uh, is they're improving, even though they didn't make the playoffs. Like, you know, they just happen to be, you know, they, they won 10 games in, in a year where there was, like, mad teams that won 10 games. Uh, <laughs> so unfortunately they were the odd team out even though they you know they have an extra wild card team they still weren't able to make the playoffs um but if Miami can get things um going on offense their defense is pretty good if they can get things like a couple more offensive weapons on on offense for Tua then they could they could do some things um who else Cleveland um, under Kevin Stefanski, they they made huge strides. They they made the playoffs. I mean, hell, they almost beat the damn Chiefs in the playoffs. Um, so uh, it, it's, we'll see if Baltimore can get. I guess like if Baltimore can get actually get like a number one wide receiver. If they can get a number one wide receiver, um, then they their offense will be drastically improved because Lamar Jackson like. You know, he's nice with it, electrifying, but he's not super nigga. <laughs> he's not super nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't make him into Michael Vick 2.0. Like, Michael Vick, 
his early days in Atlanta, you know, he was electrifying and everything like that. But it's like you gotta get him some, you gotta get him some weapons. I don't understand why some teams do this. Like they'll get like one, like like their quarterback. Like they they have a, a really good black quarterback, and they just don't want to get him any offensive weapons. I mean, they did that shit with Donovan McNabb for years in Philly. Um, then when you seen him actually get a dominant weapon in To. You know, where did we go? We went to the Super Bowl. Um, I mean, we still lost it uh, because, I mean, according to T.O. and some other <laughs> some other teammates, uh, McNabb did choke. <laughs> you know, he was throwing up in the huddle, things of that nature. But, you know, got, finally got him a weapon, and we went to the Super Bowl. Um, Atlanta, they never got Michael Vick, like, you know, any weapons. They didn't go to the Super Bowl. And, until like you know they got Matt, Matt Ryan then they finally got him some weapons and shit um who else Cam Newton Cam Newton single handedly like fucking willed Carolina to the Super Bowl in 2015 and he didn't have like a dominant wide receiver or anything like that um but then you know the Denver defense which was uh, historically good they shut them down in the Super Bowl um I'm trying to think of who else uh, I mean you can go you can go back to Randall Cunningham like my Eagles again, <laughs> uh, we we really didn't have like a true dominant wide out, and um, you know we we were never we we had a a dominant defense, but the offense can never be good enough to you know help lead us to uh, to the Super Bowl. Um, so we'll see if Kansas City can make it back there. Um, Tampa Bay, uh, we'll see if they'll be able to keep. The majority of their pieces and what they do in the draft, uh, see if they can, you know, run it back to the Super, uh, to the Super Bowl. I mean, it doesn't help. I mean, it helps that you, you know, you got Tom Brady. <laughs> uh, you know, you got the goat back there. Even though he'd probably be like what forty four. Uh, by the time next season ends, it'll be forty four. Um, you know, we'll see if you still got it. Or if he falls off a cliff, finally. Um, let's see. Uh, Dallas, if Jerry Jones can get out of his own way, <laughs> Dallas, you know they they have the talent to to make it to the uh, to the Super Bowl, but you know Jerry Jones, he he's just in his own way. Um, the rest of the NFC East, you know, it's, it's a coin toss up in the air. Um, the Rams just made a move and got. You know Matthew Stafford. They traded Jeff uh, Jared Goff uh, to Detroit. So let's see if Stafford can actually ma- uh, maximize the weapons that he has on offense and uh, actually get them to the Super Bowl. I mean, they got like the most dominant player on defense in Aaron Donald. So and uh, you know shut down corner and Jalen Ramsey. Their defense is pretty good. So um, see if they can actually get back to the Super Bowl. Um, trying to think uh san francisco could pretty much uh, they, they could probably get there um as long as their team stays healthy because they were bitten heavily by the uh by the injury bug this year um who else the uh, or green bay if uh aaron Rodgers and green bay can finally get out of their own way and stop choking um and see if aaron Rodgers can get back to the super bowl because right now he's looking like drew Brees 2.0 and speaking of Drew Brees, uh, let's see if he's finally going to retire. I mean, it's looking like he is because he just re- he redid his salary. He was supposed to make like twenty something million this upcoming season, and he re- re- he restructured his uh, contract. And he, I think he's making like the league minimum now. So uh, he might he it's speculation that he made that move to free up cap space for the New Orleans Saints. So. Let's see what actually happens with that. Um, and if he does retire, who do they replace Drew Brees with? Because I'll tell you one thing. Um, oh, damn. What the hell is his name? Uh, the, the white dude. They be having him do it all. Um, oh, damn, I forgot what his name is. But, yeah. Oh, Taysom Hill. Yeah. Uh, he's not it. He ain't it, Chief. He ain't going to take him to the Super Bowl. And, uh... I mean, Jameis Winston, if he can get out of his own damn way um, with the weapons that he has, 
let's see if they actually keep Michael Thomas because it looks like Michael Thomas wants to get the fuck out of New Orleans. So, um, they're 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 a big question mark, I would say. But um, yeah. So it's going to be interesting for the 2021 season, the 2021 NFL season. See what uh, see how that turns out. But as of right now, you know, until next season starts. Tampa Bay is the kings of uh, the NFL right now. And hats off to them and congratulations. And congratulations to, uh, you know, TB12, seven rings. Hats off to them. And once again, go blue. And now here's a quick word from our sponsor. So now we're going to get into a silly ass uh, subject. Um, This chick named Tessica Brown, I believe. Now, she is better known as uh, the chick from TikTok or Gorilla Glue Girl. Yes, the chick that put Gorilla Glue in her hair. Um, Apparently, she mistaken it for, I guess, a hair product because I guess, I I don't know anything about these hair products because I either rock a baldy. Or I just put like wave gel in my hair or some shit. Um, but my fiance, like she knows all that stuff. Uh, so she's the one who brought this to my attention because um, she was trending on Twitter. And, you know, she made a TikTok about, you know, she ran out of, I guess, like Gorilla, gl- no, Gorilla uh, Snot or some shit like that. Um, and so she went to the store and put like fucking Gorilla Glue in her hair thinking that it was like a hair product when it's you know gorilla glue is like one of the strongest adhesives that you could put you know anything on like it it, their claim is like you know you put gorilla glue on some shit like it's going to stick for a very long time so pretty much uh yeah her dumb ass uh decided to do that and uh it it, it turned out really bad so (laughs) Yo, she's actually from Louisiana. Uh, she went viral last week. Um, you know, after using Gorilla Glue in place of her actual hairspray. So, uh, Tessica Brown, who is actually 40, so she should be old enough to know this shit. She is my age. I'm 40. Like, she should know this shit. She's my age, and she's actually putting fucking Gorilla Glue in her hair. She says she washed her hair more than 15 times no she washed her hair 15 times and it didn't move she even went to the emergency room and you know they tried to get the uh the glue out of her hair and you know it it just the glue was not budging i'm like yo it's one of the strongest adhesives that you have out there like it's called gorilla glue for a fucking reason that shit has strength it has like a strong ass hold and um so pretty much it says uh, the company told TMZ that Brown uh, could use rubbing alcohol on her head, but warned that uh, if it uh, if it had actually been in place for a month, um, it was like it was likely uh, fractured at the root. So, um, so that that that's what they said, and then pretty much. Uh, uh, hold up, the scene on TMZ because now TMZ picked up <laughs> picked up coverage on this dumb shit. So it says, uh, "Gorilla Glue Girl, no Gorilla Glue Hairdo." Um, I still can't get this glue out of my hair after ER. It might be time to sue. But I'm like, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if she actually did win the lawsuit. But how the fuck can you sue Gorilla Glue when you? No, you willingly put uh, Gorilla Glue in your hair. Like, it might have been my mistake, but nobody coerced you. Like, you put Gorilla Glue in your hair. Like, you didn't do your research. So, I mean, if she files a lawsuit and wins the lawsuit, then, I mean, good for her. (laughs) But pretty much, because, like, uh, all right, so she put the Gorilla Glue in her hair, like, February 5th, I guess or something like that. It spent 22 hours in the in the ER. So the staff was dumbfounded. <laughs> they were told healthcare workers put acetone on the back of her head 
uh, but it uh, but it burned her scalp. <clears throat> Only made the glue gooey uh, before hardening back up. So, I mean, if it made the glue gooey, gooey like should they just wash the hair out? I don't know. Wash this. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So, but to, please tell me why. Like people actually started a GoFundMe page for her and raised nine thousand dollars in counting for her. Nine thousand dollars in counting for her mistake. Like her mistake, her dumbass move, but y'all raised nine thousand dollars for her. Like, I could have raised nine thousand dollars for like some other good cause. This is not a good cause. Like, this is one of those like you did it, you made a dumbass decision, and now you gotta pay for it. Like, that's the way I look at it. I don't really feel sorry for her. I don't feel sorry for her if they had to cut all her fucking hair off. And she just had to rock a baldy or some shit. But apparently, I guess you can't even cut the damn hair out. Um, that, that, that's that's uh, how much fucking glue did she put in her hair? Like, that's what I want to know. How much glue did you put in your hair? Like this shit is wild. Like this is one of the dumbest stories and like I have ever seen in my entire life, yo. Like this is fucking absolutely ridiculous. But uh, I guess uh, we'll see if she actually gets this shit solved or she actually sues gorilla glue but yeah i just had to share that with y'all because i was like yo my mind was blown i'm like how the fuck do you put gorilla glue in your hair (laughs) that shit is wild man that shit is wild but yeah listen to all you women out there don't put gorilla glue in your hair please Now, this next story uh, comes out of Plains Township uh, in Luzer, I think it's Luzerine County or Luzerine County uh, in Pennsylvania. Now, um, it was about the, I guess like the people who had a, it was three people. Uh, it was a married couple and their neighbor. Um, they had a dispute um, against, but it started off as a verbal dispute um, over some snow. Um, cause it, it snowed, you know, last, uh, last week, well, actually it snowed again yesterday too, but last week, uh, we had some heavy snow. Um, I'm in New Jersey, but this is, uh, out in Pennsylvania. Um, it's like the whole East coast. Like we, we just got hit with, you know, a whole bunch of snow. So they were uh, apparently like what happened was the married couple, I guess like they had an issue no, their neighbor had an issue with them because they were snow. Um, they were shoveling out there, I guess, like their driveway and things of that nature. So uh, he said the neighbor had said that you know they were they kept you know shoveling snow onto his um, onto his lawn, onto his uh, you know his side of, of the road because um, like the neighbor he lived across the street. So um, you know they they get into a verbal altercation. And everything like that and then like it just keeps escalating because like you know now you got a battle with egos so you know they're talking shit he's talking shit and all this and that um but like i say to people you know you never know what's going on in someone's life um and you know what it takes for someone to snap so apparently the neighbor snaps and i mean they at one point like they, they did you know call dude the f word you know um <laughs> not really gonna say that word uh but you know it's a homophobic slur uh they they they, they call him that and things of that nature but i'm like mind you like you know you getting into it they're getting into it with their neighbor i guess like never thinking that you know he's not going to take it this far he's not going to take it to the level that he took it so but they have like you know uh, a special needs um you know teenager that they were taking care of you know that it's, it's their son like I, I believe it was their son um special needs you know kid that that you know depended on them things of that nature like he uh he had like mental like some type of mental uh illness or something like that um so like they're they're yelling at their are um at their neighbor neighbors yelling back going back and forth things of that nature but you know i guess like where they should have like seeing that this shit was about to go bad like when you're arguing with somebody and somebody leaves and then they come back 
they're not bringing you flowers they're not giving you candy they're not even coming back to give you a hug like you know what i'm saying like they should have read the room uh my man like he because they were arguing he left he went in this house i guess they were thinking like you know that's over with but my man came back with a pistol um but you know my man's like his aim was uh kind of off because i think he let off like i seen the video on youtube um because like the i guess like the um the cup the the married couple like they had um I guess like a surveillance camera on their house or something like that and like picks up like the audio clean as hell and everything so like you can hear everything that's going on and he's just you know he comes back with a pistol and um you know my man like i think like he let off like at least like five or six shots and um i guess like the initial five or six shots like didn't hit like because he, he aimed for the husband first so like it didn't hit the husband at or yeah he didn't hit like those five or six shots didn't hit the husband and then like you can see like you know i, I guess about like the seven six or seven shot like it finally hit the husband and then, um you know he he like kind of realized like oh shit i'm hit so but it wasn't like a center mass shot like it was like i think like either in the chest or like the um or the shoulder or something like that so you know he realizes he's hit but like he doesn't go down so then um the neighbor like you know he uh shoots shoots a couple more rounds at the husband finally like the husband like you know he runs into the garage um dude turns to the wife and then, like you know shoots her or whatever she falls to the ground like immediately and then like what was fucked up was uh he like the neighbor like i guess like, he kind of like well he took a couple steps away and he came back and then he was like um with the same pistol you know went up and shot the shot the wife point blank like in the head but like she didn't die like it wasn't like an instant kill shot she didn't like she she got hit in the head or whatever like she fell to the then like you know she's like completely like prone to the ground but like she's still moving um by then like you know neighbors heard like the shots or whatever um so they were trying to like figure out what was going on so the dude like he wasn't done like he went because he, he went back to the husband to, i guess like to go finish him off and shit but you could see like in the um you could see like the gun in his hand like the slide was back so you, you know you could tell he was out of ammunition so this motherfucker well <laughs> he goes back to his house this motherfucker gets a fucking automatic like a, a, a an assault rifle my bad he gets an assault rifle comes back out walks over to the wife and is like see you shouldn't have been talking shit you should have shut the fuck up he shoots her like two or two or three more times and like she still doesn't like she, she still doesn't like die there like you know um because like you can still see her moving around on the on the ground like um then like he goes over to the garage shoots a uh, finishes off the husband and then he goes back into his um his house so i got i'm assuming like shortly after then like after him going back into his house like then he commits suicide because you know they said it was three dead people so he, he went and uh committed suicide and i'm like they pretty much like he probably was contemplating on killing, uh, killing himself but then like them egging him on and things of that nature like when they probably should have just walked away um gave him a reason i'm not trying to justify his actions but gave him a reason to like all right fuck it like if i'm going they they come with me because like now he's like pissed off to the highest levels of pissivity and like I, I guess like all he was seeing was red so you know he, he shoots them uh they eventually die then he goes in his uh his house and then he goes and commits suicide um but then like you know after all that goes on then you see the you know the neighbors like what's going on you know someone dial 911 get my phone things of that nature but by the time i guess like you know they came and saw what was going on like it was too late like you know they've been shot too many times and um they just didn't survive so now i think their son is now going to be raised by the grandmother but i'm just like you know pretty much uh i know it's hard sometimes when you know someone uh I guess like disrespects you or things of that nature but sometimes like you gotta take either the high road or you just gotta ignore them and just walk away because you never know what 
another person is capable of like you know know what's going on in their in their life you don't know you know what's going on i mean there, there was plenty of times when i was younger when <laughs> you ain't think about this shit someone's talking shit to you you talk shit back and you're like yo what's up what you trying to do blah 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 and all this and that like um i i was up in uh newark one time like i was staying up in uh actually hillside um but you know i had my uh my well my then wife and my daughter in the car and you know it was something as simple as i'm at a i'm at a red light and anybody that's from newark <laughs> uh, or lives in, up in that area they know like what, what what i'm talking about like when you pull up at a red light there's someone who uh, they'll pull up alongside of you like on the shoulder or something like that because like they're very like their drivers are very impatient and they like to you know try to cut you off at the light like so you know you're 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 in your lane you're in the lane that you're supposed to be in they'll pull up on the shoulder then they try to drive like you know when the light turns yellow or something like that when the opposing but when uh the other light turns yellow they'll try to gun it and try to cut you off so i think i was about like 23 24 at the time (laughs) you know so i seen dude i already knew what it was so when he tried to cut me off like i gunned it so he got behind me now yeah so then i i I eventually like stayed in front of him he was behind me and then we got to another light so then he pulls up alongside of me again and he's like yo what's up motherfucker blah 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 i was like what's up then nigga blah 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 and all this and that like then he reached in his uh you know for uh, around his waist like like he had a gun and shit i was like what the fuck you gonna do with that shit nigga and like he ain't doing nothing but then like he followed me for about like maybe like four or five blocks or something like that like to try to scare me and then um after that i was like yeah i thought y'all was pretty dumb <laughs> like after the whole situation went down i was like damn that was pretty fucking dumb like you know what i'm saying like i had my wife and daughter in the car at the time and all this and that but it's like you know sometimes as humans you know we, we get we let our pride and we let our ego get the best of us but I mean, as I got older, I just realized, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the shit ain't really worth it. Um, Because not only does this shit affect you, but it affects, you know, your family as well. Like, that's what people don't think about. Like, you know, it affects your, your, you know, if you got a significant other, which it did affect this significant other, you know, immediately. Because, you know, the wife was killed. Um, But they, you know, they was both talking shit. Uh, <laughs> it was both talking shit. So it was not like she was innocent. Like they were, you know what I'm saying? Like they was both talking shit. Um, but pretty much, yeah, man. Like sometimes you just got to put your ego aside. You know, you got you to swallow your pride and everything like that. And you just got to think about your family. You know, if you ain't got kids, you know, think about your mom's burying you or, your, you know what I'm saying? Your parents burying you or, you know what I'm saying? That if you do have kids who's going to raise them when you're gone you know things of that nature like every rea- uh, every action has a reaction and that's what I try to instill in my kids like every action that you make has a has a has a reaction you know there's a consequence to it whether it be a positive con- like whether it be positive or whether it be negative like there's always going to be a reaction to your action so you know it's, it's sad that you know three people had to die um over something so silly as you know shoveling snow but you know people die for dumb shit like every day but you know it is what it is and hopefully we can learn from this and you know just be better as people Once again, I want to thank y'all for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of this podcast. And like I said before, if there's anything that you guys want to hear, you know, want me to talk about or hear my thoughts on, um, you know, or even if you want to, you know, get up on the show, um, as we can figure out a way to uh, record, uh, just let me know. I'm down to collaborate with anybody or, you know, I'm open to talk about anything. So just let me know um, what you want to hear and, you know, I'll get it out there for you. 
But uh, yeah, thank you for listening to this episode of Dre State of Mind. I'm your gracious host, your humble host. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just get at me. Thank you. And until next time, everybody be safe. God bless. I'll talk to you later.